Hi guys, Swans Away this year, back again for another video and back again for another match preview. This weekend, Swansea City take on Bristol City at Ashton Gate and here's my match preview for the game. Now, this weekend will be a very tough test, probably the toughest test so far according to the league table. Bristol City currently sits second in the Championship. Uh, they've won four games, they've drew one and lost one. Their loss came midweek against Middlesbrough. Uh, late goal from Middlesbrough won the game for them. And for Swansea City, we, we are currently fifth in the league, so not too bad either. Three wins, two draws and one loss. We've not won in the last two. Bristol have not won in the last one so this will be a game which both teams will want to get back to winning ways so Bristol City nearly have a fully fit squad Alfie Mawson's a doubt for the game which is obviously good for some City fans as we all know we always love to concede against former players it would be good to see Alfie Mawson play against us because we've not really played against him uh, for a while actually I think we played against him last season but then he was uh, after Christmas just on the bench for them I like Alfie Mawson really good player for us and you know Alfie Mawson made 65 appearances in over two years at Swansea City in the Premier League and he scored six goals so six goals in 65 games that's nearly a goal every 10 games which is very good for a defender for Swansea City then we're missing two players George Byers has been out for god ages now um, fingers crossed we see George Byers back in a Swansea City shirt soon because obviously he had a kid uh, a few months back and you know I, I'm, I'm sure he wants to get back to playing football he's not played football for a long long time and I'm um, sure George Byers wants to get back fully fit and Moan gives right obviously he's broken his foot so he won't be returning until January anyway so he'll probably get the South Wales Derby which is a big shame in the last two games especially we've lacked that creative spark and you can see how big of an impact we're missing Moan gives right so this weekend with no Casey Palmer either because he can't play against his former club could Jan Danda come in and make a impact. Obviously Swansea City have a former Bristol City midfielder of course Corey Smith over six years of the club he made 175 appearances scoring one goal which was that memorable goal against Manchester United in the Carabao Cup where they got to the semi-finals obviously lost to Manchester City so this weekend it could be a draw 1-1 Corey Smith Alfie Mawson could have been 2-1 if Casey Palmer was allowed to play but it's always good to see former players play against the former club and usually they always do well or they get sent off so fingers crossed Alfie Mawson gets sent off and Corey Smith can bag an hat trick this weekend. But like I was saying Bristol City have got a new man Dean Holden, he's been in charge since Lee Johnson got sacked as an interim boss and then he got appointed full time in the summer. His first loss actually was interim boss was actually against Swansea City back in July, I think late July. Uh, we beat them 1 0 thanks to Connor Roberts goal. Connor Gallagher hit the post and then Connor Roberts sweeped in. That was actually a really tough game. Obviously, Jeju missed a penalty. Bristol City have some really strong players, so I got to say. Naki Wells is a great player. Elias and gets a lot of assists. Morse at the back is brilliant. Uh, Bentley, although he's at fault midweek against Middlesbrough, he is a decent goalkeeper as well. So they got a really good squad, Bristol City. And you know, it's about time they start challenging for the top six. It's early days, yeah. But if they can keep up their form, which they've done really well at the start of the season, I can't see why they can't be in the playoffs. But the only little problem is the lack of experience Dean Holden has. But again, similar to Steve Cooper, really good with young players, and that's already showing why Bristol City have maybe appointed him. So I've got a Bristol City fan on Robinson Tour, of course, continuing getting opposition fans to my channel. Really do appreciate opposition fans. I do appreciate appreciate Robinson Tour for coming on. So make sure you go subscribe to him, guys, and here's what Taylor's got to say about Bristol City chances tomorrow. So Bristol City will obviously be in Swansea. Uh, tomorrow um, on Saturday. Both teams started pretty well um, to the championship season. And Swansea are going to be trying to um, confirm, if you like, their place in the playoff places ahead of this very tough run of fixtures. Bristol City going to be trying um, to stay in the automatic places going into this very tough run as well. Um, so it's going to be tricky also being a, kind of a local derby. Um, it's going to be the players will know that um, they'll be trying to get the three points back. And it, obviously, Bristol City are going to be trying to get the three points back, um, obviously, for after losing to Middlesbrough on Tuesday night. Um, so both teams are going to be trying to look to bring um, back the three points. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Bristol City win. Um, I just see Dean Holden's side um, coming back and getting the three points tomorrow at Ashton Gate. So thank you for having me on today and good luck tomorrow. Go subscribe to him, his link will be down below. Really good Bristol City content creator, so make sure you go and subscribe to him, guys. So going on to last week's score predictions, then there's only two people who got it right, and yours truly. I did actually get my first prediction right of the series, or this season, which is really good. About time I got one right. I did say 1-1. One, one. reason I said 1-1 one, one is because Coventry were on a bit of a losing run in Swan City. We always do bad for the international break. We don't seem to win for a few games. I think Coventry probably deserved to win that game. I'm not going to lie to you. They dominated large spells of the game. They missed some really good chances as well. We only really had one key chance when we took it, which, you know, you can see as a positive, but then you can see as a negative. We struggled with really creative 
to create really good chances against a new promoted side. But I think I'll give credit to Comedy the way they set up and, you know, defensively and midfield wise, they were really strong, didn't give us many two chances either. And, you know, this weekend against Bristol City, I think this game will favour us a bit more because they'll come out a bit more on attackers, which will give the likes of Jan Dander potentially, uh, Matt Grimes, Corey Smith. Andre, you a lot more space to go forward and pick those right passes to the attacking players. Going on to score predictions, I know I said I was going to say it but just now, but I just completely went off topic. But uh, congratulations to two people, Adam Phillips and Andrew Williams. Shout out to you guys. You both said 1-1. Unfortunately, you didn't get the correct scorers, but it doesn't matter. I didn't get the correct scorer anyway, but we got the scorer. So congratulations to you two and myself. Let's have a pint, but we can't because we're in lockdown for two weeks. Get it. So congratulations to Stephen Lewis. Forgot to mention you in the video, pal. You also got your score prediction right. And I owe you a pint as well. So guys, if you want to shout out in the next video, which will be the Stoke Preview Monday, obviously the Sam Lucas Derby, then get your score predictions right against Bristol City and it will be included in Monday's video. But no, I'm looking forward to this game. We've got a pretty poor record over the years against Bristol City. Since we've been back in the Championship, we've visited them twice and we've not actually scored at their ground. So it's not really brilliant. We got battered when they played us in 2018 and, you know, last season was a pretty boring nil nil with Jake Bidwell got sent off so let's go on to my lineup. i probably make a few changes for this game obviously rotation so third game in a week and we've not won in a week so we've got to make some changes and try to get that women formula in goal for Eddie Woodman back's probably going to go for Jake Bidwell and Colin Roberts again Bidwell again really good and I thought Roberts played really well midweek saved us a point and you know some of his goal and clearance is really good back three again probably Mark Yee on the left Benka Bango on the right and Ryan Bain in the middle really impressive Ryan Bain in making his debut uh, midweek for Swan City really impressive I don't think we're going to miss Joe Rodon uh, for the next few years. Midfield, Matt Grimes is going to go in for me. I know he got a lot of criticism and I always wanted to criticise him midweek. I didn't think he had a good game. But you've got to look at the positives. He was one of the reasons why we scored. I know he was at fault for the goal, but he's played a lot of football over the years and that just is a key asset to Matt Grimes. He keeps himself fit. Um, captain, I know people criticise his captain material, but he is sort of a captain in a different way. He lets players, you know, go into different roles. and He's not more of a shitty captain, but he is a captain in my opinion. Now, I was tempted to put Jay Fulton in midweek, but I am going to put in Corey Smith just because it's against his former club, and I think he'll definitely want to play and be up his game. I don't think he was that good midweek, and I think when Jay Fulton came on half time, he really helped us defensively again. And I think Fulton should be starting, but I'm just going to go for Corey Smith. Now, in the attack midfielder role, we've seen Gutgarez play up front and A drop back, but I'm going to drop Gutgarez completely. I'm probably butchering his name, but he's been really poor for us. You know, he's slower than a bus, he can't shoot. Attack midfielder the rolling and give the first start of the season for Jan Danda. Um, I really like Jan Danda. I don't understand why he's not played a lot more, probably due to Moan Gibbs White, but I think with Casey Palmer not being able to play as well, we need an attacker midfielder in. We can't let AU drop deep. AU needs to be up front with Jamal Lowe or Liam Cullen. You'll see who I'm picking in a minute, but Jan Danda has got to start for me. We've got to get a creative spark in there. We've got to get someone in there. Small player like Jan Danda will get around the pockets and get some space. Two up front. Now, we're going to start with the obvious choice. Andre, you, our top goal scorer this season with three goals now. Uh, really impressive so far this season. Now, partnering with Andre, you, I'm going to go for Liam Cullen. I'm dropping Jamalo. I've not been really impressed with Jamalo recently. He's had a few good chances in the last couple of weeks and he's just butchered them. Liam Cullen, when he came on about the 60th minute, he was a really good spark on the left hand side of the attack in two. Uh, was on the wing at some stage and gave some really good deliveries. And I think Liam Cullen deserves to start. I think Jamal Lowe needs to up this game, potentially off the bench, and prove why he has to start. If players aren't performing, you've got to drop them. I'm not sure if Steve Cooper has the cojones to do it, but if I was in charge, I'd make a few changes because we need to get back to winning ways. Thanks guys for watching. Please hit like button, comment, subscribe. Really appreciate all the support. Yesterday on the FIFA series, I was really good. And obviously the watch longs against Coventry was really good as well. We'll be paying £10 for the game tomorrow, so if you don't fancy paying £10 of your own money and you want to get uh, some of the best coverage of the game well hopefully anyway you come onto my channel coverage will start at 10 to 3 as always so fingers crossed will be a good game really enjoyed the watch long midweek so thanks everyone for tuning in nearly 100 viewers at one point as well really good to be back guys glad the wi-fi is back and glad i am back doing videos for you guys so thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow